Hi, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to take a look on how to make sure that your users use the right naming convention in your Power App. We're going to look at uh, a Power App embedded in SharePoint, but this can be used in any normal Power App as well. Stay tuned, give it a thumbs up if you like the video, and make sure that you subscribe. So as you can see, we are now back in our SharePoint list that we've been using during the last videos as well. And as you can see here in the customer code, uh, everybody's using different naming conventions. Somebody's writing the customer code this way or this way or that way with the two dashes and so on and so forth. So if you want to have like consistent way of entering the data, it is no possible way to do this in, in, in the default SharePoint form. So we are going to try to do something similar but using Power Apps. So if you remember, we have created our custom embedded Power Apps form here. And when you try to enter a, a customer code, it's nothing stopping you, right? You can you can even skip numbers at all. And uh, it's, it's not going to tell you for anything like wrong naming convention or something similar. So let's try to do something about it. But I want to enter a new column and name it phone number. Let's make a single line of text, call it phone number. I'm making it text because we are going to use hyphens as well. Select save. And let's bring it uh, somewhere here next to PM. Now let's go to Power Apps and edit our form. So first let's bring the new created column in. So here at the add field section, we need to search for phone number. Select add. And let's bring it at the top where we have it in our SharePoint list as well, next to our PM name. So for the phone number, we want to make sure that the users enter real phone numbers. In Germany, it is that way that we have four digits and then eight digits. So it is the prefix and then the number. So to do that, we have to make sure that we select the data card that is from the phone number. Let's rename it to phone number data card. Let's call it DC for data card and then phone number. So now let's make sure that when the user enters the wrong amount of numbers, this field will turn red or something, uh, any other color you wish. So make sure that you have selected the phone uh, number card. And here on the left hand side, where the drop down is, let's search for fill. So as you can see, the fill is this code, which is white. So let's check if it is empty. And if it is empty, leave it white. If it is right, the field should be white. And if it is wrong, the field should be turned red. So for that, write first if not is blank. Which one? Data card, DC phone number. What from the data card? The text. Now we will check the amount of digits. So comma, if we will use the isMatch function. So now we need the text. The text will come from the entry in the data card. So DC phone number dot text, then comma, we now need the format. You can see what is missing here in the, in the preview. Text, comma, format. So the format will be digit, and digit and digit and digit. These are four numbers for the prefix. Then we want a hyphen. And then we want eight digits. So let's copy this. We have three, four digits here. And other four. So this is our naming convention for the numbers. And if this is true, white, otherwise red. And now we'll leave it white if it's empty. So this white here is for the is blank function. And white, if this is true, and if it's not true, then red. 
So as you can see now, the data card is empty. Let's play it. So if I write here one, two, it will turn red because it's not the right naming convention. Two, three, then space, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, which is nine, it's still red. If I put a hyphen here and delete one of them, it's going to turn white because it sees, okay, it's the right naming convention. Next, I want to put here a label that it will show the user why it is turning red, right? I mean, it's obvious, but let's make it a bit more obvious. Let's go back to the canvas edit and select insert a label. We have to unlock the card for first, and this will be red. And the text will be wrong number convention. But we don't want to have it all the time visible, right? So select it again, go to the visible property, and instead of true, we will have to say that if DC phone number dot fill equals red true otherwise false. So what this means is if the if the data card here will show will be red, then this will show up as well. Otherwise it will not show up. Let's test it. So let's change this and add a number. As you can see, this will turn red and the wrong number convention will show up as well. If we delete it, now it will both go away. The data card will remain white and the alert will go away. So to make sure that this form is not saved, we have to do something else because now it is just showing the user that the, wrong, the name convention is wrong, but it, the user can still click on save and this number will be in your SharePoint list then. So you cannot stop it yet. So for that, uh, we have to do something different. We have to make sure that when the item here has been changed, it will not be saved. So for that, we need to make sure that we copy the naming convention that we created. Let's go to fill and copy this part where it says the digit so that we don't have to write it again. Close this and now go to the on change property. Select on change and we are going to use the if is match function. So let's write if is match, which one? The data card, phone number, dot text. Now write our naming convention. And if this is true, then allow the saving. Otherwise, we will want to show a notification saying that you are using the wrong naming con convention. Please entry four numbers for prefix and hyphen and eight numbers. Close the quotes. Next, we want to write the notification type. So notification type will be not an information or success, will be error. Close the parenthesis. And after showing the error, we want to reset the value. So reset which value? The DC phone number. And since this is all in our if function, we need to close the parenthesis. So let's format the text, take a look. So if it's matching this naming convention, then allow the on change, allow the saving. Otherwise, notify and do the reset. So let's try it out. Select play. And let's add another number, wrong naming convention, and it will be reset. And here at the top, you can see our alert. You're using the wrong naming convention. So the user is not able to save it. That's, that's the most important part. We can do something similar for the customer code as well. 
So let's copy the same code we use here for the unchanged pr property. Let's go to the customer code, select the data cut which is inside, and let's rename it. Let's say DC customer code so that it is easier for IntelliSense to find it. So let's go on the on change property. It's easier to find uh, if you search. Yeah, there it is, on change. So this is now empty for some reason, should be actually false or true. Um, let's paste it in here and we have to do some edits. So instead of DC phone number, it has to say DC uh, customer code. And here as well, DC customer code. And this is but not our naming convention, of course. We want to have a letter and then four digits. So like D1234 and not uh, a, like D dash or D uh, underscore or so on. So for that, instead of this naming convention, we are going to put our naming convention in quotes and write D and now the amount of how many digits you want to have. So it will you input backslash, small d, and then in the curly brackets, you, we want four digits. So this is our naming convention. And we also want to change the notification we are receiving because we don't have to say that. But you're going to say, let's change here, please. Entry D and then XXX for the naming convention for four digits. Let's try it out. Select play. And here, this is correct. So let's add another one. As you can see, this is now not allowing us to change it, right? Let's delete it. Let's write D minus one, two, three, four. It will delete it. He is now jumping to the to the default value, which is the first item in the SharePoint list. But in the SharePoint, we'll see in a minute, uh, it, it should make it empty, like the phone number. Okay, so it looks like it's working. Let's publish this to SharePoint and uh, see how it looks. Let's go to file, save. Publish SharePoint. Okay, let's try it out. Select new, project name, Contoso number six. That's the same customer name, name. The customer code, let's try it out. It's D minus one, two, three, four. As you can see, it is not allowing us. It reset the code and it told us that it's wrong. So you have to write again. And this time correct, one, two, three, four. And now it's not complaining. Financial status red, green, let's leave it as it is, myself. And the phone number, zero, one, two, three. Wrong number <laughs> convention because it's not finished. And if you move that, see, if you want to leave it that way, it will delete it and say that you need to put this type of uh, name convention. So let's do it again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So these are eight numbers and it's not complaining anymore. There's some text there, we can leave it as it is. And select save. And now the data we want is inside and the way we want to have it, not like that. And the numbers are also correct. That's it for this video, it was a short one. I think it's very helpful since uh, to do this in the default chapman form is not uh, available yet. And uh, if you want to have a naming convention in your SharePoint list and your items, you will have to do something similar. It's not very difficult. It's just how it is. And uh, I hope you liked it. If you did so, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and see you in the next one.